hello and welcome back to another video. Today we have another book haul. <laughs> After promising myself that I would stop buying books, I bought lots more books. Sorry. I just can't resist. It's like I have a problem, a proper problem now. March is an absolute no book buying month. I am on a ban, a proper ban. We are no, 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 no with the buying of books. Um, and you'll see why in a minute because I have plenty to read so I don't need to buy any more books. So as with last time, I'm going to start with the physical copies and then we're going to move over to my Kindle and to any ebooks I bought. I just feel like I've been going crazy. Some of these were for read-alongs or for book clubs that I joined. Others were just because people recommended them and I snapped them up. There was a whole... It's been a thing. Let's get started. We've got a lot to go through. So, first up, I recently met the lovely Erin from Reading in Fairyland on Instagram and she was doing a buddy read for the um, Secrets of a Summer Night... It happened on Autumn, Lisa Copa series. I don't know if it actually has, does it have a name? Does the series have a name? I haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, that series, I'd read the first book with the seasonally booked up read along. And so I really wanted to read the rest. And I thought, well, I may as well read it with these lovely people. So I had to go and buy book number one, number two, obviously. Um, it happened on Autumn. And I really wanted to try and get the paper copy for Secrets of Summer Night because I really enjoyed it on my Kindle. But the particular bookseller I was on didn't have that one, but they did have it happen one, one autumn and it arrived and it looks like this. And I was ridiculously excited to find this is actually a first edition and it has the step back. This, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're wondering, is my first step back. I've never had a step back before. I'm a little emotional. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, it was rather cool. I'm rather happy with that. So we have already read this. I've read this as part of the read along. I have now ordered the next one, which is Devon and Winter. Very excited about that one. But yes, but the seller that had this listed on eBay had an offer, I think, where you bought two and you got some money off. And although they didn't have the first book in the series, which I would have quite liked, or the third, which would have been convenient, they did have Cold Hearted Rake, also by Lisa Claypass, which also has the step back. So I got the two of them together. I haven't read this one yet. It's on the to br and whew, it looks so pretty. I love it. So I'm excited to read that one. So after discovering the seller, I decided to look through the rest of their back catalogue and kind of see what other books they got. They're ridiculously cheap. They're like two or three pounds a book, which is incredible. And I did order myself a few books. Again, they were on like buy one, get one 20% off. So I did buy six because, <laughs> because, 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 because. Um, and first up I got, and what's interesting about these books is none of them had synopsis on the website. So they had the cover, they had the title, but I have no idea what any of these books are about. So I kind of bought them a little bit blind. This could be interesting. So first up we have To Surrender to a Rogue by Cara Elliott. And this is a Circle of Sin book. It says, an expert in antiquities, Lady Alessandra della Giamatti arrives in Bath to excavate newly discovered Roman ruins only to find herself caught in the web of a blackmailer threatening to expose her scandalous past. The one man who can help her is Lord James Black Jack Pearson, a fellow member of the expedition and a sinfully handsome rogue whose tempting presence ignites a different sort of danger. Jack has clashed with Alessandra in the past, so when she suddenly surrenders her body, he can't help being suspicious. Is she a scheming temptress or is she truly a lady in trouble? As desire and deception swirl around them, Alessandra and Jack must find a way to win each other's trust, for if they don't work together to uncover a shocking truth, their enemy and their own simmering passions may destroy them and everything they cherish. That one sounds exciting. I like that. It sounds a bit different. It doesn't sound like usual sitting in tea, sitting in drawing rooms drinking tea and playing the piano forte it sounds a bit of a different setup so I don't actually know when that one was set does it say it does not have a date so I have no idea when it's set but anyway that one sounds great I'm looking forward to reading that one next up from the same ebay seller is my Wicked Marquess by Galen Foley I do have at least one book by Galen Foley up in my collection and from what I remember they're more kind of in depth they're not just kind of very kind of easy to read just you know 
your usual kind of just like solid romance novel they usually have more going for them they're a bit kind of grittier um i have i think it's called the duke that i have and that is quite a kind of deep story um with quite a lot of complex elements to it so i'll be interested to how this one turns out to London's aristocracy, the Inferno Club is a scandalous society of men no proper young lady would acknowledge. In private, they are warriors who would do anything to protect their king and country. The Marquis of Rotherstone has decided it's time to restore the family's good name. But as a member of the Inferno Club, he knows there is only one way to redeem himself in society's eyes. Marry a lady of impeccable beauty and breeding, whose reputation is, above all, spotless. Someone quite unlike Daphne Starling. True, she's temptingly lovely, but a jilted suitor has nearly ruined her reputation. I hate when that happens. Why should the jilted suitor ruin her reputation? Sucks. Anyway, I digress. Still, Max cannot resist her allure or the challenge of proving London's gossips wrong. He would do anything to win her hand and show that even a wicked Marquess can make a perfect husband. I like the sound of that one. That sounds exactly my kind of book. Oh, I do like it when I pick good books just from the cover. I do like it. So then, completely a different style, I picked up this one, which is Desire Unchanged by Larissa, I have no idea how you pronounce that. Is it Ioni? Ion? Sorry, sorry. I will do some research, I have no idea. I believe this is book two. Maybe number three. I feel this isn't the first book in the series, so I need to do a bit of research to see if I need to read the series in order. This sounds paranormal romancy. And we all know I love a good paranormal romance. Cressy Cole is my queen of paranormal romance, but I am willing to branch out and find some new ones. I was like Gina Showalter as well. <sighs> this one says, Runa Wagner never meant to fall in love with the sexy stranger, but she couldn't resist the unbelievable passion that burned between them, a passion that died when she discovered his betrayal and found herself forever changed. Now determined to make Shade pay for the transformation that haunts her, Runa searches for him, but ends up prisoner to his darkest enemy. A seminist demon with a love curse that threatens him with eternal torment, Shade hoped he'd seen the last of Runa and her irresistible charm. But when he wakes up in a dank dungeon chained next to a mysteriously powerful Runa, he realises that her effect on him is more dangerous than ever. As they cap to cast a spell that bonds them as life mates, Shade and Runa must fight for their lives and their hearts, or succumb to a madman's evil plan. I mean, you had me at a love curse and eternal torment. You just... yes. Yes sold like i said i need to find out if i need to read the first book first but if not i'm getting stuck into that one and then i couldn't resist going back to my roots a bit and picking up some just really bog standard mills and boone style historical romance which is kind of where i grew up reading romance these were my babies these were what led me to this historical romance romance fascination and i couldn't resist them so we have hers to desire which looks like a kind of knightsy, kind of more medieval romance. And it says, from the moment they met, Lady Beatrice yearned for brooding Sir Ranulph de Beauvier. But tainted as the daughter of a traitorous nobleman, marriage seemed impossible. Unlike to secure the match of her dreams for a lifetime, the spirited young maiden would get to her man for one passionate night. Ranulph never believed he'd marry until he met the vivacious bee. Sent by his liege lord to take command of a castle in Cornwall, Ranulph was surprised beyond belief when the virtuous bee suddenly arrived intent on seduction would desire or honour triumph in this game of love. See, that's that's kind of the story you're going to get in Mills and Boone romance. They're just, I love them. I love them all. And like I said, this is my bread and butter of romance. This is where I grew up, so it'll be good to go back to those good old days. I haven't read a Mills and Boone romance in, or a new Mills and Boone romance in years, mainly because I've been distracted by Kerrigan Byrne and Julia Quinn and Eloise James and all the rest of them. Then we have Notorious Rake, Innocent Lady by Bronwyn Scott. This says, uh, the going price for Julia Prentice's virginity was £15,000. Determined not to enter into a forced marriage, Julia could see no way out unless she were to become a ruined woman. Notorious Rake, Payne Ramsden was reputed to have no qualms about seducing in innocence, so maybe he would help with her predicament. Certainly Payne deserved his rakish reputation, yet Julia was so achingly pure one night with her might just ruin him. Awakening Julia's sensuality aroused unfamiliar feelings in him. Was it too late to make them both respectable? Oh, I love that kind of plot. I love I love the getting out of an arranged marriage by ruining yourself. That's always a lot of fun. I love when the rake gets won over by someone's innocence and by their purity and, you know, someone he's so used to being seduced by more experienced women and then he meets someone who isn't experienced but they completely went oh yes yes please oh 
so many good books to read. And then the last one was In the Master's Bed by Blythe Gifford. I mean, look at the cover. Look at it. This is the kind of book that I cannot read in front of my children because Poppy will go, Oh, yeah, what's that book about? <laughs> um, why are they naked? He would teach her about sensuality. Wow, I really appear to have picked a brand this time round. I've picked a theme, apparently. To live the life of independence she craves, Jane de Weston disguises herself as a young man. She doesn't foresee her attraction to Duncan, who stirs unknown but delightful sensations in her highly receptive, very feminine body. When Duncan accidentally discovers her true identity, he knows he should send her away, but he agrees to keep her secret. I'll bet he does. The Jane brings light into the dark corners of his heart and Duncan fully intends to teach his willing pupil the exquisite pleasures of being a woman. Oh, I might read that one tonight. Just feeling it. Feeling it, you know? Okay, so obviously for the Romance Book Squad read along, we are reading the Victorian Rebel series and we got up to book five, which is The Scot Who Beds His Wife. So there it is. It's very beautiful. It's blue. I was very pleased with because the previous two, The Highlander and The Duke, I couldn't get in hard copy. This one I could. Um, I have now read this as part of the read along. Really, really enjoyed it. It was had some very funny moments, had some very kind of dramatic moments. Just a great book. Really loved it. Um, I'll talk about that in my February wrap up, which will be coming very soon. And then the next one of the Victorian Rebel series is, of course, The Duke with the Dragon Tattoo. It's so funny. These books, both of these books have come from... America. This one says Walmart price and that one was like a ex-American library copy. How they've made their way across the pond to me, I don't know, but I'm very glad to have them. Also read this one. This is this one about the Rook, the mysterious pirate. No one knows where it's come from. My god, this book is so good. But again, I will talk about that later. But this is the sixth book in the Victorian Rebel series. And then last but not least in the Victorian Rebel series, we have book seven, which is either a dark and stormy night, I think it's called, or Seducing a Stranger. Now, I have a massive bone to pick with Amazon and Amazon sellers for this particular book because I have this book on Kindle Limited, um, so I don't need to buy it. But on Amazon, I saw the original A Dark and Stormy Night cover being sold and I thought I'd really like that cover because it goes with the others and it all fits in very well so I'm gonna order it and buy it and this turned up this is not the cover that was it's the same book I should just point out it is exactly the same book I presume um it's just they rebranded it as the first of the good girls series because it's kind of like a almost like a spin-off series but if you put a cover of one book on whether whatever the text is inside the book if you put a specific cover as a photograph not even, this wasn't even like just a standard stock image. This was actually a photograph of the book because it was the back as well. And it's not the book you actually send me. That's annoying. I mean, I'm going to keep it because now I have the first of the Good Girl series and I was going to buy the rest of them anyway. So I now have it. But I, I was annoyed. I was annoyed at this. That, that hacked me off immensely. So Amazon sellers, Amazon marketplace. I can't remember exactly. I think it's the book, just book depository. No, no. Black cross, black mark, not not happy about that. Um, but it is Seducing a Stranger. It is a really good book. It's Carlton Morley's story, The Inspector. You've seen him in all the other stories. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading it again. But it's not the one I ordered. <laughs> so I'm nearly done with my hard copy, physical copies of books. Next up, for the Rake Appreciation Society, we were reading the Sarah McLean scandals and scoundrels series which starts with a rogue not taken and then a scot in the dark and then the day of the duchess so i bought book one a while ago and that was one cover it was the british cover the girl on the front quite kind of gothic -y looking so i went looking for book two and the one i found was this one which is the American cover with, you guessed it, the step back. I mean, I have an issue with this. We may have to see if we can get rid of that. But this is the sky in the dark. So I ordered that. But now I'm annoyed because now I have one book in one cover and one book in the other. And that would probably have bothered me less six months ago. But now that I've been introduced to your crazy book community people, this is the kind of thing that bothers me. So I also at the same time ordered book one 
in the step bag version as well. So now I have both of them. So now I have two copies of this book. Two copies, and I liked it, but I wouldn't say it was a own two copies of it book, so I will at some point have to decide whether I'm getting rid of the first copy. But then I also have ordered the third in the same, so I have the matching set. I do really like them. I haven't read Scott in the Dark yet. I've read Rogue Not Taken, and Sarah McLean's another new favourite author. She's awesome. I love her, so I'm looking forward to them. But I do love the fact that because of you crazy people on booktube, I'm now buying multiple copies of books I already own. What has happened to me? <laughs> and finally, my final physical copy book that I've brought, I think that I've brought this month. I'll probably find more. I'll probably go around my house and just find books like lurking under things. It's like an infestation in my house at the moment. But the last book that I bought that I actually remember is Tessa Dare's Romancing the Duke. So this is the first book in the Castles Ever After series and I have actually read on Kindle one of the later books which is Do You Want to Start a Scandal and thoroughly enjoyed it so I thought I need to go back and start the series from the very beginning and I need to do it with proper books. So we have this one. This does not have a step back. I'm not judging you, it just doesn't. I didn't know that was important until six months ago. I've heard a lot about this one, a lot of people talk about this one and are really kind of complimentary of it so I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in. Tessa Dare is another new favourite author. I have a lot of new favourite authors. I'm probably going to do a, a video at some point all about those. But I think this is the last of my physical copies. So we're now going to move over to my Kindle. Where I do have some books that aren't all historical. So, where do, we, where do we start? Where do we start? There are a lot of books here, I'm telling you. So first up, I have a couple of ARCs. These are review copies sent through NetGalley, um, which is a website where you can get review copies of books. And they very kindly sent me a couple to read in exchange for feedback. Um, the first one is The Unexpected Wife by Jess Michaels. This is a book where the beginning of the book starts with the heroine finding out that her husband is dead. Not only is he dead, he's presumed murdered. Not only is he presumed murdered, He's a serial bigamist. He has three wives that we know of. And she's one of them. She's the last one. And that's where the story starts. I have read it. I'm not gonna talk too much about it now, but it's fun. It's cool. And then the second arc is Trapped, a dark mafia romance by Anna Ray. And this is your kind of standard typical dark mafia romance. She is being held captive by him for revenge purposes and they're gonna fall in love. What more do you need to know? So then we have, I can't believe I'm going to say this, we have Sugar Daddies. This was recommended to me by Tiffany at Neverland Pixie, not to me personally, but to everybody. She was talking about it on her Instagram and I find her so fascinating when she's talking about books because she's so kind of, well, she thinks everything through so much and she's so kind of well-spoken when she talks about them and she really gives an in-depth review of them and kind of what the themes are behind it so I find her fascinating to anyway. This book is a menage book featuring a bisexual male couple who are seeking a third party for companionship and other things. Um, I'm gonna leave it there but if that's your kind of thing yeah you might like that one. So next up in preparation for a later read along that I'll be doing I did get a copy of To Steal a Heart by Casey Bateman, which was free. I know nothing about this book yet. This is like, we're reading this in a couple of weeks, I think. And so, but I thought I'd get it now while it's free. I know nothing about it at all, but there you go. It's there, it's historical romance again. I think it's, I think it's a spy theme is this time's read along. So I'm assuming it's spy related. Then another two, I don't, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you why I've got these two books. I must have seen them advertised somewhere or seen someone talk about them but I've got Demise of a Self-Centered Playboy and Lessons from a One Night Stand both by Piper Rain and I think they're both free and I can't remember who I saw advertise them it may have been Piper Rain herself but I just thought I'm sure I've read things by her before and really enjoyed them so I snapped them up while they were free on Kindle I really recommend keeping your eyes out for free books on Kindle and then I feel bad because the author doesn't get anything if they're free but I can at least write about them and review them so there's that isn't there so next up we got another arc. This is A Rogue to Ruin by Darcy Burke. And this is again, it's a historical romance novel. And I'm trying to remember what the synopsis was because I can't remember. I've remembered. 
So at the start of this book, uh, our heroine, Anne, is in a bookshop and she meets a mysterious stranger and they start hanging out together and spending a bit of time together unchaperoned, naughty naughty, and from there a romance on ensues. Again, it was an arc, I downloaded it for a review and I will talk about it properly in my February wrap up later. Next up is another free book, Carol, I keep seeing. You've got to follow authors on, follow, join up on their newsletters, follow them on Instagram, follow them on Twitter, do something because so many of them will occasionally put one or one of their book series for free. This is Misunderstanding by Aubrey Bondurant and I've read books by her before, really, really enjoyed them. So I immediately snapped this one up and if I like it, then I will buy the rest of the series because that is the whole point of reading the first one is you find out if you like it. So next up we have a couple of books that I'm quite nervous about because some of the themes may be themes that I particularly find a bit uncomfortable and believe me I don't say that very often at all but this is the March reads for the Romance Book Squad and they are reading King of Libertines and Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. I've read Pam Godwin's before, they are super dark, they are dark as it gets. <laughs> it's the kind of stuff that I read going I can't believe I'm enjoying it. These books I think are slightly different to the stuff I've read before. They're pirate romances, which is super exciting. And they're dark pirate romances, which is even more exciting. But I think there are themes of cheating and kind of different elements around that. And that always makes me a little bit icky in romance. I feel like in romance particularly, I want my couples to be faithful to each other that's just you know it's a thing I just I have high expectations what can I say so I'm giving it a go I have spoken to a few people about some spoilers to just check kind of where we're aiming with this book and how it's gonna go and they've convinced me to give it a go so we're giving it a go but I am wary I think I might do do I do a reading vlog I don't know mm, we'll see and then last but not least we have love is a rogue by Lenora Bell which was another another book for another read-along also the seasonally booked up the winter of the warfare read-along this book is a kind of gender swapped beauty and the beast um it's another warfare book it's about a young woman who wants to write a dictionary and just wants to be left alone to do that she doesn't consider herself particularly attractive or interesting to the opposite sex she is distracted by a very very sexy carpenter who's working on her brother's house and he just fascinates her and she doesn't want to be attracted to him but she totally is and they kind of end up spending more time together and blah 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 there's romance as you'd expect again not going to say too much about that one right now but I think that is all the books I've bought since the last time I did a book haul which really wasn't that long ago I need to stop somebody stop me um but yeah so as you can see I have an awful lot to read in March, which is why we'll be doing a March no book buying ban. Mm -mm. Kindle Limited doesn't count because obviously Kindle Limited is free. I pay seven ninety nine a month for it. You don't have to actually pay for each individual book. So that doesn't count. If I see what I want to read on there, that's okay. But I have got a few kind of reading vlog, a few kind of plans for what I want to read and how I want to get down some of these books and tick some of them off and get some of them out of the way because honestly, it's getting ridiculous to have this many books that are unread I'm like a book hoarder so I will be doing a lot of book related content videos etc in March I really hope you'll subscribe so you can come along with me and I will see you again soon thanks for watching bye